In the midnight hour, she cries more, more, more. Well, all right, Billy, we'll give you some more with this brand new episode of Totally 80s and 90s Recall. Welcome back to the studio. If you're new to this show, it's sweet that you found us. And for our returning listeners, it's great to have you back. Well, if you love all things 80s and 90s, from music and movies to television and pop culture, then this is the podcast for you. I am one of your hosts, David, joined as always by my rockin' bro, Rob. <laughs> you got, <laughs> caught me on my heels with the, the bro. but uh, you know it's Too much bro culture? Uh, all right, Whatever. Uh-huh. Uh, I feel the need... Yeah. The need for speed. That's too easy. I uh, thought you were going to no. do like ones that made it difficult to figure them out. No, I figured you'd get that one. Okay, so, I feel yeah. the need for speed. Top Gun 86. You got to do that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if if someone doesn't answer that, that would be upsetting. Yeah. Especially if they were a 80s yeah. or 90s type person. You would Really? And you wouldn't even have to necessarily need to, see to know that. You, yeah. knew, you just knew that. Could just come from anywhere. Yeah. Well... The need for speed is a relevant thing, but on this podcast, Rob and I will travel back to the two decades that shaped not only our lives, but influenced the world for generations that followed. Each episode, we will develop and discuss lists of selected topics or perhaps identify a significant event, movie, or whatever we recall from growing up in the 80s and 90s, providing some awesome memories, fun, and nostalgia along the way. With all that, Rob, what topic will we be covering for this broed out episode? <sighs> <laughs> so dumb. Uh, we are looking at the uh, our our favorite songs of 1984, and stress our favorite our, songs. Yes. There are so many songs in 1984. Yeah, we were talking pre-production, and there's yeah, yeah. there's a lot. I like I know tons of 80s songs, mm-hmm. and until I start getting into these lists, I never always know exactly what year they come out. And then I start looking at a year mm-hmm. like 84, and I'm like. I don't even know where to begin sometimes. Like, where am I getting 10 songs from? Yeah, uh, really, uh, I don't think this is an overstated word, but it's a pivotal year pivotal. in music entertainment. Like yeah. The, uh, lots happened. Lots happened. In this year. So, uh, so before we jump to the music, 1984. Yeah. That's a long time ago. It was a long time ago. Uh, do we remember anything about 1984? No, I, all I have in my notes here is I, was, I would have been seven. Seven. And uh, MTV... Yeah, was kind of the driver of entertainment, right? That so uh, for me the, and that's why I mean pivotal in the sense that this was when music, the visual aspect of music really took Started hold. Taking you know? off, so yeah. then you know the fashion and the what music looked like and style and you know uh, big hair and care, things that were appealing visually. Yeah. And so yeah, so that's eighty four is when that really started to happen for me. Eighty four, yeah, I don't remember much from a child standpoint same thing i'm like seven eight years old so uh probably eight years old at that point um yeah i can't recall too much so a lot of these songs i remember listening to in the 80s Mm -hmm. and i don't know if it was exactly 84 but i do remember Mm -hmm. hearing them during that time yeah uh whether it was with babysitters or whoever it may have been um but i will say i'm not kidding i had 100 songs i could have chose from here and uh there are just so many good ones Mm -hmm. putting 10 together was Mm -hmm. We may need to do a part two on 1984 uh, yeah. to do it justice because no. there's there's too many songs. Like it was so hard yeah. to pin down. I guarantee someone's going to listen to this and go, "How did you leave that off? How did you leave that yeah. off?" Uh, I didn't want to leave any of them yeah. off, but uh, well, it was tough. I don't think this is giving a lot away, but just to give people some context, the top albums of '84 in order: Born in the USA, Springsteen, 30 million copies, Legend. Which is uh, Marley, twenty-eight million. Purple Rain, twenty-five million copies. Like a Virgin, Madonna, twenty-one million copies. Reckless, Brian Adams, twenty million, twelve million, million copies. Uh, Van Halen's nineteen eighty-four, eleven, uh, almost over eleven and a half million. And then the Footloose soundtrack, eleven and a half. So, so I heard there we have Van Halen, huge. Yeah, I Footloose, mean all those are and, huge. Yeah, Madonna, Prince. And you had to squeak uh, Brian Adams in Springsteen, there. Is that right? Springsteen, Madonna, Van Halen. I hear you glossing right over yep. that, but I saw you squeak Brian Adams in there. Uh, <laughs> amongst all those heavy hitters, this Bruce Springsteen, you got the boss, you he's got a, he's Madonna. He's an 80s and, legend. Yeah, he's something. 
Uh, yeah. So, well, apparently it was a good year for him. So good for Brian Adams. Um, hopefully uh, that just tells me we can look forward to some BA on Rob's list. I, so, I cannot confirm, cannot confirm or deny, deny those allegations. Which means I already know the answer. We'll just have to see how high up or how down low that fool appears. All right. So, well, all right, dudes, let's head on over to the mall, hit up Sparrow for a slice, and listen to some great music from 1984. Hey, it's Rob. As much fun as Dave and I have bringing you this podcast, we also like to introduce and feature independent podcasters like ourselves. Friends of the show, Sean and Eric, have an 80s and 90s throwback podcast that we think you'll really enjoy called Toys Were Us. So sit back and enjoy this trailer for a great nostalgic podcast. Are you a child of the 80s or 90s? Do you remember the toys that made your childhood unforgettable? Then join us for a trip down memory lane with our new podcast, Toys R Us, co-hosted by two friends who have been playing with toys for over 30 years. We will explore the iconic and not so well-known toys of these decades. From G.I. Joe to Transformers, Mask to WWF, we'll share our personal stories and opinions on what made these toys so special. Tune in to and subscribe to Toys R Us wherever you get your podcasts and relive the magic of your childhood. Well, let's hear it for the boy with that boy being you, Rob, and rock us with your number 10, unless it's Brian Adams. <laughs> uh, well, my uh, number 10 is Out of Touch. Ooh, good one. By Hall & Oates. Hall & Oates. I'm I, I, but and I, I like this song. I, I felt like we couldn't have an '84 list without some Hall and Oates. Hall and Oates. It's a really good song. Yeah. So what I, what I remember about that, why I have it in here is, um, so this is out of touch. July of '84. Um, interesting fact. Uh, they don't like being called Hall and Oates. <laughs> Uh, they want to be Daryl Hall, yes, and no. John Oates. They it, their official name is Daryl Hall and John Oates. Ah. They do not like Hall and Oates. They do not like it. Um, the this this was on the uh, this was a their last Hot 100 number one single, which I thought was kind of different. Uh, they had uh, it was their but it was their 14th consecutive top 40 uh, between 80 and 84. No. Ah. Um, they found themselves in the top 40 with 29 of the 33 singles charting on the Billboard 100. Um, so here's some of their songs. Rich Girl, Kiss on My List, Private Eyes, I Can't Go, uh, go For That, Man Eater, Out of Touch is one of them. Um, yeah. So uh, in an interview, I, I thought this was interesting. I think this is, I relate to this, working with you. It says, in an interview in a 1983 issue of Juke Magazine, Oates was asked about whether conflicts arose. He replied that, quote, we have our creative differences, but we reconcile them. <laughs> he said that if they both come up with a different way of doing something, they'd try it both ways, and whatever sounded the better of the two, they would use. So in this case, you're being Oates. Are you saying we have creative differences? No, no, no. No, we don't have differences. But oh, I like okay. I like that we, we try things and whatever works, yeah. it works. And so we have a good working relationship. Well, I appreciate that. You're definitely Oates in this situation, so it's fine. Is he the one with the mustache? He is the one with the mustache. Okay. I'll yeah. be Oates. And I the like perm. It. Yeah, I'll be yeah. Oates. So you can be Oates. Yeah. I'm no, okay. that's a great song. Okay and you can't that. go long, wrong with uh, apparently Daryl Hall yeah, and John it, Oates. Is, they they really want to be called. They, um, so if they weren't called that, would they just walk out of the room? I don't know. I'm out of here. Uh, but they remain the most successful duo of all time. Wow. Ahead of the Carpenters, the Everly Brothers, and Simon and Garfunkel. Well, they're definitely the best of that group. So yeah, I yeah. will I will wholeheartedly agree with that. Yeah. So, so yeah. Well, I like some John. Uh, that, to get an 84 list in there, we had to have some. Got to have some. Daryl Hall. Be careful. I'm sorry. Yeah, Yeah. we're going to, they're going to, when they listen to this, because I'm sure they're listening, when they listen to this, they're (laughs) going to be upset. What would you do if we got like a cease and desist from From Hall and Oates? From Hall and Oates. For not saying Daryl and John? Or, yeah. uh, Open up that letter. I I think I would frame it and hang it on the wall (laughs) and say, Hall and Oates took the time to send me a letter (laughs) of any kind. So, because if I track anywhere in their life, that's uh, pretty amazing. So, yeah, we'll take that. Yeah. Well, good start. Well, my number 10 classic pop song, super catchy, great to sing along to. And it is called I Can Dream About You by Dan Hartman. Oh, it's really good. So, um, I, I remember hearing this song a lot. 
right? Not in 84, but a lot after that. So released in April of 84, went to number six on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100, a top 10 in four other countries, including number three in Australia. So no shock there that they're listening to good music. Um, this was just a, this is just a classic pop song to me. And uh, I, when I hear this, I just think of the 80s. I think of being young. I think of being a kid, and I, I love it. You can sing along with it. Sounds good. I actually had this on my list, and I um, I, I pulled it. Yeah? Because I it's a song I like now. You like now. But I don't remember. You didn't like it, it then? Yeah, I don't remember, oh, I I don't it, remember it much, but now I hear it. And I go, I, oh, yeah. I, I remember like eight or nine-year-old David just jumping on his bed, yelling, I can dream about you. It seemed relevant, <laughs> right? I think so. No, I didn't. <laughs> yes, I it's did. So I understand. There may, or uh, na- there may or may not have been a cape involved as well, so... <laughs> So, well, what is your number nine? All right, my number nine is uh, Wild Boys by Duran. 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 Is that? Yeah, this one's uh, it's like more serious. Yeah, it? it's not one of their like poppy ones. Yeah. Sounds more rugged. Yeah. But I remember it. Yeah. I will say it's not my favorite Duran Duran song. No, no, no. No. But I uh, definitely remember it. Yeah. So, yeah, this is Wild Boys. It's October of 84. Um, I Again, to me, it's not an '80s list without some Duran Duran. They were very—I mean, they were everywhere in the '80s. Oh yeah, uh, it's one of their highest charting singles. It peaked at number one or uh, at number two. Um, it became the band's highest peaking single in Australia. I know how much you like. The, I like the you, Australians. You like, yeah. For all um, my Australian listeners, yeah. I approve of that. Yeah, uh, it's the tenth most streamed Duran Duran song in the UK. That's really specific, but um, but the video had kind of a Mad Max feel to it. I remember yeah. I rewatched it. And it makes less sense now. I don't know. But all the different band members are like kind of in different scenarios. So one is strapped to the roof of a car and he's watching these like uh, videos. It's kind of like uh, like some sort of torture where he's watching uh, past life videos. One's caged in a pile of computer equipment. Another is put on a, in a hot air balloon. Yeah. Uh, one's bound to the, the front of a ship. And then Simon Le Bon, the lead singer, he's on this windmill. That's spinning, and every time it goes around, it the when it gets to the bottom, it goes down through the water, and there's eels in the water, and there's this robot head thing, and <laughs> choreographed dancing, and I yeah. don't know, it was wacky. Well, weird. Duran but, Duran was very big on music videos; they'd make them like mini movies or something. Yeah, and that's what this that's one what was. They loved it was very do. much a like kind of a had a very cin- cinematic feel to oh, it, yeah. and kind of over the top. Did it, they record something for Beyond Thunderdome or something like that? Well, that. It felt like Thunderdome. Yeah, it felt exactly. So I, I made it. I probably grew up. Th- maybe in my mind too. I thought it had. It was like part of the movie. But I rewatched it and I couldn't find anything. Uh-huh. I think maybe just in my mind I associated the two. But yeah, yeah. maybe. Well, that's a anyway, good one. Yeah. So it's all, it's all a Duran yeah. Duran. Yeah. You went with uh, Hall and Oates, Duran mm-hmm. Duran. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Daryl. Anyway, uh, <laughs> my number nine is a song that probably gets played at every reunion wedding. Anywhere you could go, and that is You Spin Me Round Like a Record by Dead or Alive. Oh, yeah, this is a classic. Use this in the wedding singer. That's how they open the oh, movie. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, just a great classic. Sounds like the 80s. Got that nice synthesizer in the background. I like when they get in on that keyboard real well. Uh, released 5 November 84, went to number 11 on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100. A top 10 in 12 other countries. Mm-hmm. Number one in four countries, including Switzerland. So good for the Swiss. Not neutral on that song at all. Uh, UK voted this song their number 17 favorite 80s number one hits. Oh, wow. Um, so number 17 on that chart. Uh, I, I don't know how many that was out of, but they made it into the top 20. So that's probably pretty good. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Wedding Singer is where if I had to do like an association. Yeah, Wedding Singer. Song, wedding Singer. What you wow. think of. Um, yeah, and the video was strange as well. He, he's spinning around. Yeah, like he, that's what the yeah. song is. <laughs> I mean, he's he's doing exactly what he tells oh, you he's gonna do. Golly, right? Yeah, that that is what he said he was gonna do. He said he was gonna spin around like a record. There's another uh, when I hear the round like a record, the movie Office Space. Uh, <laughs> that one dude that's talking to them, he says, um, "She gets around, dude, like a record." <laughs> Yeah. And he whistles. That's the O-Face guy. Yeah, that's the O-Face yeah. guy. So, All right. Well, that takes right. us to so, your number eight. My number eight already? Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, my number eight is um, yeah. it's the leg action. Fantastic. ZZ, ZZ Top. Great video. 
I didn't know who ZZ Top was until I saw that video. Yeah, no. Uh, a lot of people did. Uh, but yeah, a uh, band formed actually in 1969. Yep. And they were a blues band, and you had Billy Gibbons and Frank Beard and Dusty Hill. And um, Did you say Frank Beard? Yeah. and or, or, No, it wasn't Frank Beard. Yeah, it might have been. You said Beard. And, yeah. They're what, big and one beards. Of, yeah, and one of them just passed away. And, oh. Um, but anyway, you had a nerdy, girl, a nerdy girl working in a shoe store, and you got the nerdy fry cook across the street, and the fuzzy guitars, and fuzzy they spun guitars. around. Oh, and, yeah. Um, synchronized spinning guitars is what I put here. By the way, that um, girl was not nerdy. No, she was First of all. Yeah. Well, I guess yeah, she wasn't nerdy. Was that a case where we took glasses off and she was just beautiful? Well, well then they turn, yeah. Then they, yeah. So then the, the ZZ Top car pulls up, which, <laughs> little side note, the ZZ Top car is called the Eliminator. Nice. It is now housed in the Cleveland Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's a 1933 Ford Coupe. Awesome. Has suicide doors. Um, but the car pulls up. These girls get out. They kind of give her a makeover. They, all the people that were treating her bad oh, yeah. now that now that she's taken her. over. Yep. yep. Um, did you know that ZZ Top was originally going to be called? They were originally going to call themselves ZZ King, in honor of, in honor of BB King. Nice. Um, but uh, they anyway they picked it number. This song picked it number eight. Um, it's their highest charting single. Um, oh, and it was the third installment of a trilogy. Um, the other two being "Give Me All Your Lovin'" okay. and "Sharp Dressed Man," and it won the MTV Music Award for best. Video uh, for a Buster group, uh, for a group in 1984. Look at that. So, yeah, legs. Come on. That was a strong MTV video. Lots yeah. of airplay yes. on that one. And and what I read is that they had to kind of reinvent themselves. And this, the the visual yeah. m- um, mode of video yeah. gave them an opportunity to kind of reinvent think, themselves. Do you think the one guy just couldn't grow the beard? Or because he just had the mustache and the perm or whatever. I know he was. He, kinda, he, was, the the dr- he was the drummer. The drummer. Yeah, he's a little, and he know. just had to be different yeah. or something. I so, think, so it's Frank. Frank's the one that just passed think, away. Uh, I yeah. think he couldn't grow the beard. That's what happened right there. Sorry, man. So the other two, <laughs> A plus beards, right? Yeah. Like old man winter type beards right yeah. there. So. Yeah, I thought that was an iconic song, and oh, yeah. uh, the car was iconic, the group was iconic, the beard, the video. I mean, everything was kind of just kind of screams '80s, and that's when oh, we would have yeah. saw uh, what I would have saw on TV. And oh yeah, yeah. So. well, my number eight is probably one of the best pop, just overall pop songs of the 1980s, in my opinion. It's been sampled a million times, and that is "Break My Stride" by Matthew Wilder. Oh, yeah. This song is fantastic. So uh, it, it's interesting. I That song, I knew it forever, and then I finally watched the video, and the guy who sings it doesn't match uh, the <laughs> what I hear on the radio. Yeah, I couldn't even pull him up. Um, he's like five foot three, or he looks like he's like five three, five four. He's got a perm. He was wearing a half shirt in the video. I mean, it's just oh. a whole thing. It's, it's quite the vibe he's got going on there, but... This reached number five on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100, number one in Norway, by the way. So top 10 in nine other countries. And fun fact about uh, Mr. Matthew Wilder here, he was the producer of No Doubt's Tragic Kingdom really? album. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. And, of course, this has been sampled by Puff Daddy and several others since then, okay. uh, the Break My Stride. So this has been used lots and lots of times over and over, and it's just a... It's just a very signature pop song in the oh, 1980s. Yeah. Nope, that's a good pick. Yeah, I didn't. But again, we could talk all day about the ones that we didn't pick. And Yeah, there's probably there plenty were, of those. There was a lot. So, All right, well, we are my number seven. Seven. My number seven is also one that has been sampled uh, a ton since it came out. But it is. Um, oh, yeah. I can't. You went with the Hagar. 55. Nice. Is that. I mean, do you, is that something you oh. recognize with? Oh, yeah. I can't drive 55. Yeah, I've got a bit of a leg foot. I, yeah. I liked that song, and I liked Hagar when he was all by himself, but him and Van Halen is an abomination. You so, didn't like it. You, yeah. weren't, you weren't a fan. Oh, heck yeah. No. That was bad. Yeah, that was one of those didn't yeah, like people it. either like it or, or love it or hate it. Was that it? on I Joe don't. Dirt where he goes, I like Van Halen, not Van Hagar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this song is in the national, uh, or this song is in is in regards to, at the time, it was the national maximum speed law that set the speed at 55 miles an hour. Oh, man, uh, that was had, a long time ago. Yeah, and it had something to do with the Energy Con- Conservation Act, uh, yada, yada, yada. And it remained in law until 1995. Uh, but the song 
peaked at uh, number 26. It uh, is the 100th song on VH1's 100 Greatest Hard Rock Songs. So, oh, I mean, nice. Uh, but yeah, uh, Sammy Hargar, uh, it op- he's a race car driver in the video. Anyway, he's driving <laughs> a black Ferrari. Wait a minute. He's, he's not an actual not, race no, car driver? No. Man. Uh, uh, he's driving a black Ferrari. Great lyrics. I tried my best illegal move. A big black and white come and crushed my groove again. Yeah. That was really good. Uh, he manhandles a cop. He gets cuffed, taken to court. There's a jury already. Uh, he's charged for resisting arrest. The yeah. jug, judge displays a mini guillotine and demonstrates by cutting a cigar. It's is awesome. it guillotine or guillotine? How, what would you say? Are guillotine? You, are you guillotine? Going tomato, tomato on I that don't one? Know. Potato, right. tomato. That's fine. I got you. Um, eventually, his pit crew jumps from the jury box. Uh, riot ensues. He does this killer flip. He runs and he flips off the wall and catches the car and then he jumps clean over the judge's <laughs> bench. It's so good. Um, then, uh, anyway, he, uh, oh, they get put in the jail. Synchronized dancing in the jail cell. Put in the jail. Knocks down the, and then uh, knocks down the door and then drives off in the sunset. Uh, but it's still everywhere. Uh, you hear yeah. it on commercials. You hear it, uh, you know, but yeah. I feel like they missed a, a movie here where Sammy Hagar's a race car driver and then grows <laughs> up to be like, and then turns into a <laughs> rock star and then ruins Van Halen. <laughs> The whole plot they just had right there, and they didn't do anything with it. So, uh, well, that's no, good. Yeah, Can't drive fifty five. I always felt like that was a song like uh, older people listen to less mm-hmm. less a song that I listen to like at my age and this this time frame because it just felt like felt like something I'd hear at the Milwaukee Car Show or something like oh, that. Oh, sure. No, it? no, no. Yep. Yeah. Where as I wouldn't hear "Break My Stride" at the Milwaukee Car Show, so that would not <laughs> Matthew Wilder would not pop up, no. and my number seven would not have popped up either, and that would have been. Of course, Missing You by John Wait. I also have that. I, mean, I, I took it off. I like a good ballad, and I love a good love song. So I can't. Oh, so good. good. Yeah. And you know, this is a song that you'd like. And you I'd... know, when I was seven or eight years old, I could identify with this, you know, heartbreak and missing something, right? Yeah. So, oh, yeah, right? Oh, well, yeah. Tragically, it's, it was, it, the missing something was probably like I lost a toy under the couch and I couldn't find it. Super relevant. Yeah. Singing about a He-Man <laughs> toy or something. But this went number one in the U.S., Billboard Hot 100, number one in Canada, and number one in Ireland. So go wow, Ireland. The Irish. Uh, its worst performance was in Belgium, but it still reached number 19, so top 20 hit no matter what. Wow. Um, as I said, love ballad, 80s, everything I need is here. Uh, mm-hmm. Checks every box. And this is just a song I... Love listening to still, and I remember listening to a lot mm-hmm. at that time. So, can't go wrong with the missing you. All right, yeah, I, I, I had that one, and I removed it. Too many, I, it. Had, I had too many choices. Too so. many choices. Um, uh, my number six number is six. Uh, another uh, race car driver. It is not a race car <laughs> driver, uh, <laughs> but it is. Uh, it, this is it. Ah, he is. He is. I remember this video. Um, yeah. They had their heads in the sand. Yeah. And they were bobbing them back and forth. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's classic. Yeah. I remember, I distinctly remember this video. Oh, yeah. I love you. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no. They, and I I don't, so I personally don't think they get enough love. But no, anyway. they don't. Uh, this song became their fifth top 10 and third consecutive numbers uh, number uh, hit on the Billboard Hot 100 for them. So check out this lineup of songs. Do You Believe in Love? Yep. Working for a living, heart and soul. I want a new drug. The heart of rock and roll. If this is it, stuck with you. Hip to be square and doing it all for my baby. They had 19 top 10 singles across various charts. Um, their music has been called Blue Eyed Soul, New Wave, yep. Power Pop, and Roots Rock. I didn't know that. They're awesome. We just said they're awesome. Yeah, I love everything them. you just said yeah, tells so you good. how awesome they are. Um, uh, yeah, the video. Uh, uh, um, the, the, so the lead singer, he's trying to for, uh, forget his ex. But he keeps seeing around the beach. Yeah, uh, classic beach kind of scene. '80s bikinis. And I noticed uh, Huey didn't want to take his shirt off on the beach. No, he didn't. He, he did. Not. He kept his shirt on yeah, the whole he time. He did. Uh, beach in the summertime. Phone booth on the beach. Goes to a crystal ball reader. The heads in the sand. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I put the guy with the guitar uh, c- cigarette. There's one guy who had big oh, yeah. mutton chop uh, and, and the cigarette. He always had. Him. He always had. Uh, him. There's a shark, um, and then he's the last guy on the beach, and he hooks up with a different girl. Good it's for like, him. I think it's the ex's friend or something. Anyway, I'm guessing if you're Huey Lewis, you're hooking up with a lot of girls. Yeah, so. and then he no it ends with there. a sand shark attacking a family. Sand so, shark, sand shark. So there you go. I didn't even know there were sand sharks. Yeah, so anyway. that was something to be scared of in the '80s. <laughs> Hanging out at the beach, you get hit with a sand shark. But again, I felt like uh, an '84, kind of that mid '80s 
list without a Huey Lewis song would be would would be wrong. Would be wrong. So, yeah. Would just that would be a fail. Is yeah. what it would be. Absolutely. Well, that's really good. My number six is from a band you already mentioned, but maybe a better song in my opinion, and oh, that's wow. Duran Duran with the Reflex. Mm. I do like that one. Yeah, it sounds a little more Duran Duranish mm-hmm. to me. Yep, that's a good one. So, um, this was their first song to go number one on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100. Also went number one in Belgium and Ireland, the Netherlands, and the U.K., uh, but not so good in France, where it only hit number 15. Still a top 20 hit, but uh, again, the French stingy with their uh, musical preferences. Stingy. Stingy. Uh, what I remember about this song now is, I mean, it's iconic. Sounds like the 80s. Uh-huh. But uh, a couple of years back, uh, they made the uh, movie American Wedding. And uh, if you have seen that or not seen that, but anyway, uh, they're going to look for a um, wedding dress and they end up in a bar and Stifler ends up doing a dance contest uh, against another individual. (laughs) And one of the main songs they play to dance to is The Reflex. Mm -hmm. So I always think of Stifler running around on the dance floor uh, in his dance competition, (laughs) Justin Timberlake, (laughs) Britney Spears style Yeah, uh, for that. So Duran Duran, Reflex, uh, good song. No, I, no, I can't argue that. I think it's good. A, a Duran Duran song had, I think, it has to be in your list. So that, has to be anyway. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Where are we at? My number five. Number five. Wow. My number five. It's like Johnny Five. Oh yeah. Not a good movie. Oh. You do like it though. I do like it. <laughs> um, I put it on my list. You so did. There you go. <laughs> All right. My number five is. Ah, you did. I did it. Hot. Hot for teacher. Hot for teacher. October 1984. So, so while this plays, my number five is Hot for Teacher. Shut up. Van Halen, yeah. Are you kidding? No. Absolutely not. (laughs) I mean, how can you, I mean, the answer, the answer would have been that, I mean, Van Halen has to be on the list. And a lot of people probably would have gone to Jump or Panama, right, in this case. Um, But Hot for Teacher is it for me. So we both have the same number five. Yeah. Um. I've got this song only reached number 56 on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 in Australia. It did real bad, only landing at number 89. So this isn't their highest charting song. But what I'll tell you for me about the song is, mm-hmm. one, the video is fantastic, right? I yes. mean, I watched the video, and uh, I just assumed when I got to high school it was going to be like that. Um, by the way, it was not. Um, but I was hoping it would have been. Um, it, you know, what's going on here? We got teachers in bikinis. <laughs> uh, you got lots of things going on. Nobody wants yeah. to go to class. There's all no. kinds of things happening. But- I mean, the reality is that must have been a formative song for me because mm-hmm. I married a hot teacher, and so <laughs> it matches with Van Halen's Hot for Teacher, so it must uh, have been Im- embedded into my brain early on mm-hmm. uh, as a youth, and uh, now I'm living the dream. <laughs> so I can thank Diamond Dave and the rest of the group for uh, wow. lead- leading me in the right direction. Okay. So. Okay. I mean, I'm... Okay. Uh, this one... <laughs> Why wow. are you laughing? Because I married a hot teacher. <laughs> I, I want nothing to do with it. Okay. Uh, this was the final single released during the band's 74 to 85 era. I thought that was interesting. Uh, one thing, I, so if people haven't seen the video, uh, there's a nerdy boy, uh, Waldo. <laughs> Waldo. And the mom's prepping him for, you know, and he, and he goes, oh, mom, you know I'm not like the other guys. I'm nervous and my socks are too loose. Oh, yeah. Do you know who did his voice? Um, I don't. Phil Hartman. Oh, great. Yeah. That's I didn't good. know that. Yeah. I like um, it. But then, so then then the video immediately kicks into, like, it is not, it's only a couple seconds in, and it's uh-huh. already a uh, uh, striptease or whatever, yeah. you know. The, you know it's uh, great. The phys ed teacher says phys ed across yeah. her sash. Um, you got to know what class you're in. Uh, at one time, uh, the, the band is dressed in red leader shoes, and they're synchronized dancing under a crystal ball. Um, I brought my pencil. I love that part. Uh, and then uh, give me something to write on, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Uh, it's not even like parts they're singing. It's like no. they're just talking to each other yeah. in the background. It's and funny. He goes, uh, so. Yeah, and then he goes, class dismissed. You know. So anyway, uh, I other than I just like the song. Well, yeah, it's I actually like really good. It too. opens with the drum. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like really, really iconic kind of drum sound. And so I like um, too. At the end, they do like a. Uh, that thing where they put words on stage to tell you, or words on the screen to tell you what happened to them. Like it tells you David oh, yeah. off went off yeah, to yeah. do something. Yeah, and, Alex yeah. became a gynecologist. There you go. Uh, Michael became a sumo wrestler. By the way, Alex, 
it was uh he was the bassist, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Michael becomes a sumo wrestler. Eddie become, is in a mental institution. Sounds about right. Uh, David uh, becomes a game show game host, host. and we think Waldo <laughs> becomes a pimp. We think so, but we're not sure. <laughs> we're not sure. Yeah, it doesn't tell you. Well, we tied at number five. That's cool. It's our first crossover. Wow. So there and we the go. Same number. Same it's number. Happened a couple times. Well, it happened. Yeah, it just that's where it ranks for what I have. Wow. That's so cool. all right. So now it's back to me, number four. Yeah, we'll flip it right over. All right. So my, oh, here we go. Uh-oh. I'm not even going to intro it. I'm just going to play it. Oh, there it is. You know it's coming. <laughs> oh, yeah. Brian, he's so nasty. Yes. Uh, do you think he sings like that on purpose? Like, do you think he could sing clear and he chooses to go, I'm going to run to you? I don't know. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, so yeah, so this is Run to You, October awesome. of 84. A little fun fact. Um, it's a cheating song. Sounds about right. Yeah, so it's sung from the perspective of a man who's, uh, he's talking to his mistress and he's saying, I'm going to run to, I'm going to run to you. But the video though, his mistress is his guitar. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, uh, very clever. How he's so that. profound. Yeah, Ryan. right. Uh, uh, peaked at number six. Um, one of the most successful songs. Oh, so okay, here's some songs from that album. Run to you, somebody, heaven, summer of '69, one night, or, or uh, but here are some of his songs. I don't know if they're all from that one. Run to you, somebody, heaven, summer of '69, one night, love affair. It's only love. Great songs. Yeah. Uh, he's one of the best-selling music artists of all time. Nah, he's not. <laughs> all time. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's estimated that he has sold between 75 million and more than 100 million records. That's because Canada is kicking in on those numbers. Oh, that's, not all, that's not oh, all. That's not all America. Oh, you were asking about his voice. Here's a description of his voice: sandpaper tenor. That's exactly that's what a it sounds cross like. Cross between yes. Joe Cocker and Bruce Springsteen. Oh, this is my favorite. He's mm-hmm. been re- he's been referred to as the Groover from Vancouver. Uh huh. That's awful. <laughs> Whoever coined that should be fired. If that's a writer, should have his, uh, you oh. know. His uh, I, credentials revoked. Yeah, and I will openly fact. admit, I got that off of Wikipedia, so it's very possible somebody, somebody just, just added that. that. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that makes sense. But the Groover from Vancouver. Yeah. Good one. So, you um, know, if there was a uh, celebrity death match, remember that from MTV yes. in the 90s? Yeah, celebrity death match. Steve <laughs> Winwood would rip Brian Adams' <laughs> arms right out of their sockets. Yes. So. Um, uh, uh, let's see. I, I'm, I have to read these. So here's his, some of his accomplishments. 20 Juno Awards, which is like the Canadian Grammy. 56 Juno <laughs> nominations, Grammy. 15 Grammy nominations, a uh, Grammy for best song written for a motion picture in 1980, 1992. Robin I know. Yep. Uh, nominated for three times for an Academy Award, five Golden Globe Awards. Uh, I, I mean, I could keep going on. I got tons. He's a photographer. Um, okay. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. in 2023, he was nominated for the induction into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Way too much. Brian anyway, Adams. so Brian Adams. I know I'm Brian making, Adams. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you you might can, have heard of him. You can say, sell him all you want. It's still Brian Adams, right? <laughs> like putting lipstick on a pig. No, he's a eighty. He's a <laughs> look. He's, he's got the a lot Groover of Groover from Vancouver. Vancouver. Uh, I can never hear that again, and I'll be more than happy. <laughs> so, well, we'll go ahead and roll away from the Groover, and we're going to go to a band and song that you already uh, mentioned. Uh, you just had him way too low on the countdown, oh. and that is Daryl Hall and John Oates. Oh, well, you didn't without a touch. You did the same song. Same song. I mean, this is pretty quintessential 80s sounding to me. Because I struggled. There was a couple songs they had. There were, but this is my favorite. Yes. So, so, you know, uh, you know what? Cease and desist be damned. Hall and Oates for me are a pretty, you know, (laughs) iconic 80s situation. Uh, Great band. Uh, This went to number one on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100. Wow, yeah. Uh, Just did okay success wise in other countries. Did its best in Canada getting a number four, but. yeah, you can't go wrong with Hall Notes. Uh, my favorite thing later was on uh, Saturday Night Live. Uh, <laughs> uh, Chris Kattan yeah. was dressed like him, and they were doing like the behind the music. Yeah. And he just every time they interview him, he goes, "I'm Oats." I'm Oats. <laughs> you know, Daryl Hall would have all these like <laughs> profound things to say, and he'd just go, "I'm Oats." So, yeah. um, I look. You, you can say what you want about it, and they're both pivotal to the band. But if you're just watching from the outside, Oates does just look like I'm here to play the guitar and stand yeah. behind you type yeah. of thing. So, But he made a lot of money yeah. doing that. And I'm sure he got a lot of fall off of the girls uh-huh. that Daryl Hall didn't want. Oh, yeah. So there you go. Oh, yeah. Can't go wrong. Yeah, yeah the video was uh, 
fun to watch. Very, very 80s. Everything's oversized, oversized drums. Yeah, love it. They're inside of a drum. They're, yeah. And uh, Daryl Hall's <laughs> dancing is... Is next level. It's phenomenal. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's... He's uh he was a eighties icon. He had yeah, good hair too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't the groover from Vancouver. He was not. Right. Uh, we'll have to think of a good nickname for him. All right. Uh, not uh, something horrible like that. <laughs> oh, okay. My number three is uh oh, I, and this probably should be higher, but I'm not gonna. Uh, all right. And then, and I went with the U two. I did. Wow, I did. I, yeah, yeah, new, new, new two. Bono, Bono, the from, Edge. From one pretentious, oh, it's not the Edge. It's just just Edge. edge. Yeah. yeah, take the the. From one pretentious individual yourself to another, Bono. Yeah, it's very no. heady. Yeah, this is a kind of a heady very song, heady. right? Oh, yeah. uh, this is September of eighty four. Um, I want to admit something that I, uh, I guess I never associated this with Martin Luther King. Did you? I have not. Okay. So apparently this was written as a tribute to uh, Martin Luther King. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know that. I nice. Now that I listen to it, Makes I'm like, sense. oh, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Uh, but, man, it is it is on a lot of people's, like, 500 greatest songs of all time, and it's really high. It's like uh, Rolling Stone ranked it uh, 378 out of 500. Then in, uh, then it was 388. Um, the, uh, rock and Roll Hall of Fame considers it one of the 500 songs that shaped rock and roll. Jeez. Um, uh, I mean, it is the Spin magazine named it 65th greatest uh, single in history. Wow. Uh, I don't know. The I guess the story behind it is it was inspired by an exhibit, uh, an MLK exhibit when they were in uh, Chicago in '83. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, a lot of it is it's speaking about those throughout history. So, for example, MLK, Jesus Christ. Who have died because they preached of the equity, equality of all men, and practiced nonviolence as the only way to achieve their goal of having this equality universally recognized. So, um, and then that sounds like such a reason you two would like, write a song. Yes, right. Bono just pouring over those details okay. to write out this this yeah. great song. Um, yeah. So I, I, it's a good song. It's a good I, song. And, That's not my favorite yeah. U two song, but it's yeah, a good I'm not, one. And I'm not. I'm, I'm not I, a big U two guy. I, no. No. Are you? I'm not. No, I think it's kind of like when you said, um, oh, well, my sister was listening to a previous episode and you made a comment about not liking Dances with Wolves. Oh, it's horrible. It, oh, that did not sit well. No, too bad. You know, <laughs> there are people out there that are like, what? What? Uh, but, so I think, I, look, I think, I think it, you there choose are, the same way. I yeah, think people will are. go, what? You don't like you too? I mean, they no. just, woof. I mean, but, I don't mind you too. I'm just not going to listen to a lot of it. Yeah. So, and look, if people want to sit through nine hours of Kevin Costner wandering around on a horse, <laughs> Looking for a wolf? Knock yourself out. I think it's terrible. I don't and, think uh, that's the plot. Gonna... Oh, it's the plot. <laughs> there is no plot. Nine hours chasing Just Costner a wolf. walking around grunting a little bit. Yeah. So it's. But uh, I'm not a Costner rough. fan. So there, yeah, the, uh, I said that right. The, yeah, you can stay away from that. Yeah, yeah. So anyway. well, that's uh, that's solid. You two. Yeah, you can't have an '80s list and not have you two. If yeah. they're available, you probably need to choose them. Uh, well, my number three does not have the accolades that U2 does, and I don't know if the artist is <laughs> as pretentious as Bono, but it is 99 Left Balloons by Nina. That's a fun one. Oh, yeah. This is as 80s as, this is as, 80s as it gets right here. And I have selected the German-speaking version. I, I was just going to say, which this is, is all German. Yeah, which is the only version you should listen to. Um <laughs> Uh, classic 80s song. Uh, they released an English version in the U.S. in 84, and it bombed. It didn't even hit the charts. didn't even get on the Hot 100. Then they released the German version, and it went to number two. Uh, and it was number one in 10 other countries, including, no surprise for you, Rob, West Germany. Oh. And again, for our young listeners out there, oh. West Germany was the second half of what is now just Germany, as it was split in two parts after right. World War II. And in the 80s, it was still in two parts. So... Um, that's a weird map if you go back and look yeah. at it. So, but, uh, this song actually, you know, it's kind of a, it sounds fun and poppy, but it's kind of a war protest yeah. type song. Um, but, uh, yeah, when I was a kid, I just liked singing along to mm -hmm. it and I tried to emulate some of the <laughs> German words, yeah. uh, not knowing what any of them were. So, and of course she didn't like the translation they did into English uh -huh. because it sounds like nonsense, uh -huh. but in German it makes more sense. So it didn't translate well. Um, I, yeah, because I didn't realize that was a uh, 
kind of a quasi protest song. It is, huh? but know. the beat they put it's to it, so fun. the way they sing it, uh, you would yeah just think it's like a club pop hit. Oh, right? interesting. Yeah. I have another song coming up that uh, I think similar conversation. No, uh, are we at my number two already? Number two. Wow. All right, my number two is uh, oh well. And you're going to well. <laughs> give me grief for this one. Grief? But. Is it more Brian Adams? No. Ah, you went with the boss. I did. I went yeah. with the boss. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's on every 80s list. Yeah, and I, yeah I think so. I'm not even going to play the rest. Everybody just knows that. The, yeah, so angry. It, so here's, here's probably where my yeah. uh, displeasure with brian adams comes sometimes and with bruce is that singing style i mean that all-time raspiness is not always that appealing to me so mm-hmm. that's just that's my it's not that it's not a good song i just mm-hmm. sometimes listening to them over and over can be a little much but that's an iconic 80s song it's, yeah. it's popular as anything else so yeah. um, Ex- expected yeah uh so th- some things about this song uh that i didn't know uh it's very uh patriotic i mean it's got maybe it's got the flags and it's got the small town factories and it, I mean, it, uh, but I didn't realize that this was kind of a, um, kind of an anti-American song. Oh no, it is hundred percent. In fact, uh, so Ronald Reagan used this song yeah. when he was doing his reelection campaign and everyone was like, because they just played the born in the USA part mm-hmm. and everybody keys on that. Uh, not understanding that the lyrics are exactly what you just said, the opposite of that. So. Because um, yeah. if you go dive into some of the actual lyrics, they don't match up with the "Born in the USA" part. So. No, it's a, it, and I actually wrote that down. It said um, uh, that uh, yeah, people would use it. The song is widely misunderstood. Uh, it's it was used at rallies, campaigns, blah blah blah. Um, but it's kind of a mocking. Uh, it's but it uh, depicts the difficulties and marginalization of returning working class Vietnam vets had to face. Yep. Hundred um, percent. But yeah. So anyway. But yeah. It's like on everybody's top list. It's oh yeah. The, one, of the, one of the best selling albums of all time. And um, yeah. But anyway, that's yeah. that's one that Spring, Springsteen. That whole album was. I mean, there's umpteen. Uh, how many? There was like uh, how many number ones came off of that album? It was like anyway. But yeah. yeah. Produced seven top ten singles. Yeah. So that is a lot. Yeah. So I'll give him that. Still not even the stats that old B.A. had, though. Brian Adams. Oh, no. You didn't have no, nearly as many no, stats as Brian, you did for your boy right there. Well, you know. Uh-huh. Brian Adams. He, yeah, we got something going there. Yeah. yeah. So uh, my number two, uh, no one mistaked for anything, protest or otherwise, uh, <laughs> it is from Pat Benatar. Oh. Love is a Battlefield. You say you can't have an 80s list without some of those other yeah. ones. You can't have an 80s list without Pat Benatar. No. And the video was great. Oh, yeah. I would say at least for the first half of the – look, I will say Madonna's the like female singer of the 80s, of the whole 80s, yeah. if you want to say that. Yeah. But she didn't come in until like you know, 84. This is her big year. Madonna start to peak, 83, 84. Uh, previous to that, I'd say the first half of the 90s, Pat Benatar. I mean, people did her style. They cut her hair like they oh, cut their yeah, hair yeah, like yeah. her. They wore their clothes yeah. like her. Um, this was ranked number thirty by VH1 for greatest eighty songs, uh, but only hit number five on the US Billboard Hot 100. However, Australia, Belgium, and the Netherlands all sent it to number one, and she won a Grammy for this song mm. in 1985. Yeah, uh, but yeah, to me, Pat Benatar is eighties personified. Mm-hmm. Like he, the outfits she wore, yeah. the short hairdo, um, her sound, everything yeah. is just as eighties as it can be. So. This is a no-brainer for me. Oh yeah, no, that's a good one. Do I, if I remember right, wasn't it? She like a runaway or something in the video, or and it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a youth anthem kind of thing, like a little, yeah. a little rebellion. It is. Right? She yeah. had a few songs like that. It's kind of an '80s thing. That's kind of to be the, yeah, to a rebel, rebel yeah. against. She did want to rebel. That's the '80s. They were tough. We had to rebel. Yeah, they were, they were hard times. <laughs> well, I, never I was, was this more true, but before we reveal our number ones, let's head to the cut line. Uh, as we put our list together, we often find it very difficult, uh, particularly in this case, to rank just 10 in each category. So for this segment, we will each identify two songs that just fail out of our top 10. We will also identify an honorable mention, which is a song we missed the first time around, but found some time later and really liked. Um, and so, Rob, through all of your pre-production and Research, what is your first cut? 
All right, my first cut is uh, probably not his most popular one, but uh, it is uh, Prince. I would die for you. Oh, yeah. You had a lot to choose from, and you went with that one. Yeah. You know what? Not bad. No, it's not bad. I don't love everything all Prince. No. But this one's not too bad. No, not bad. Little Red Corvette and some of those. Or, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, those I get um, tired of those ones. True, 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 true. One's not too bad. Uh, but this reached number eight. Uh, it's from the Purple Rain album, considered one of the greatest albums of all time. It is. Uh, just from that album in 84. So <laughs> you, you were saying earlier, like, there's too many songs to pick from 84. For those, yeah. Let's just talk, eight, just Prince 84. I uh, know. When Doves Cry, Let's Go Crazy, Purple Rain, and I Would Die For You. Those all came out in 84. Yeah. Um, written, and you probably picked, the, like, the fifth least popular yeah, one. Yeah, that's of what that I mean. It's, yeah. it, of those, yeah. I I mean, but I, I like this one. I like this one. No, it's good. Um uh, uh, it was written by Prince himself. Um, what I found interesting, I guess I had never listened to the lyrics a ton, uh, was that it's got a very spiritual bend to it. So, oh. he t- you know, I would die for you. Um, he talks about being uh, your Messiah. Um, he says, uh, I'm your Messiah, and you're the reason why. Um, he, he says, uh, you're just a sinner. Um, I'm not a human. I'm a dove. I'm your conscious. I am love. Oh. Yeah, see? Maybe I he had a God that. complex. I, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's possible. He had a big ego after yeah, all. So. That is true. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, like Champagne Supernova, uh-huh. what, is, what is the meaning of Purple Rain? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I'll tell We're you. We're going that far. Uh, right? Prince explained that the meaning of Purple Rain as follows. Here's his quote. When there's blood in the sky, red and blue equals purple. So purple rain pertains to the end of the world and being with the one you love and letting your faith or God guide you through the purple rain. All right. Did that make any sense to you? Sounds good. Nope. Uh, Makes more sense than champagne yeah. supernova. Uh, and then there's a whole thing about, I did not realize this, but he used a lot of pseudonyms when he wrote uh, songs. Yeah. So uh, Joey Coco. Oh. Yeah. Uh, wrote for Kenny uh, Rogers. Uh, Alexander Nevermind was another name he went by. Uh, just Christopher. He wrote Manic Monday. Did you know no. by the Bengals? That's Didn't good. Know that. Jamie Starr and the Star Company. He wrote lots of songs, actually. Yeah. So. Uh, Morris Day and the Time, Jungle Love. Oh, that's one of my favorites. That was actually in my oh. <laughs> cuts, because, but I then know. I discovered that he wrote it. I love um, that song. And then uh, this was, I think this was one that, oh, the uh, the instrument, uh, he played all of his instruments on, um, this is a little different on Morris Day and the Time, but what I found out is that the guy that plays the uh, keyboard, yeah, that's Doctor Fink. Nice. He performed dressed as surgi- uh, in surgical mask and scrubs. But anyway, oh, okay. um, yeah. So that's that's my that's my first cut. That's good. Yeah. yeah, got Prince again. You probably you've gone with all the iconic Van Halen's. Yeah, because you know. that was but that's good. That's, that's what, what I what knew. Were. Yeah, right? that's what I knew. I knew those so, too. Um, so, well, mine again does not have the accolades that uh, Prince has. Uh, it is Scandal. Singing oh. Warrior. No. Warrior. This is dessert. Dessert. You know, funny story. For years, I thought this was Pat Benatar. Okay. And it's not. I thought <laughs> I thought the same thing. It sounds just like a Pat Benatar song. Yeah. And I forever thought it was definitely her. And it turns out, not her at all. Yeah. So no. um, this is just a great song. I've always loved it. Uh, I will admit what I just admitted. It's not her. Uh, it actually features Patty Smythe. Yeah. Uh, so I was way off. Uh, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not at all. Not at all in the ballpark. Hit number seven in the U.S. and number eleven in South Africa. Wow. So good for that. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I had that on my list as well, and I pulled it. But oh um, man, yeah, I did. I also did not know that that was not Pat. Not Benatar. Pat Benatar. I think I just thought yeah. for years I just was. thought it was her. It sounds wow. just like her. Shows you what we know. But um, maybe my ear, my listening ear, was not as good as I thought it was. Yeah. 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 All right, my cut. Number two. Cut number two. Is, uh, well, you're going to like this one. Footloose. Ah, you went with the Footloose. I did go with the Footloose. Yeah. This is January of 84. Yeah, it's one of the most popular songs of the year. Oh, Easy yeah. To go with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we don't need to discuss the movie. Everybody kind of knows it, right? Yeah. Uh, a, a Footloose was also on the same soundtrack Just to with, drive a little drama when yeah. we do a list which we will at some point of overrated 80s movies Footloose is going to go way up high so you you think it's overrated? oh it's awful uh, oh I figured I, you'd like that no, no. oh I thought maybe you'd like that that seems like something you'd, you'd like absolutely oh, okay. not uh, 
Let's Hear It For The Boy was also on that soundtrack. It was. It was also a song that could have been picked. Um, oh, yeah. It was. It got an Academy Award nomination for Best Music. Yeah. Uh, it uh, Golden Globe no- nomination. Uh, we can talk about the song, the movie, blah, blah, blah. Uh, spent three weeks at number one. Here's what I found interesting. Footloose is loosely placed on a town of Elmore City, uh, of Elmore City in Oklahoma. But in 1981, Linden... A small town in Washington State. It's about four hours from us here. It's almost on the Canadian border. Yeah. Um, passed an ordinance that banned the practice of dancing at events and locations where alcohol would be served. Oh. So this incident received uh, national attention, and the townsfolk over there kind of think maybe Footloose is based on is them. Based on them. Oh, so, okay. Because it happened only a couple years before Footloose. I just so. thought it was a dumb idea, and apparently it really happened. <laughs> that's, so let's ban I dancing. I thought it was, but no, it, uh, yeah. Banning dancing. Yeah. Okay. Where, where alcohol would be served. What so. are you going to do? Footloose. Yeah, yeah. Very relevant. Yeah. I didn't have Footloose, but uh, See, uh, I, I might I save thought, that. I thought you would have had I might it. save it for another day. <laughs> I do love Kenny Loggins. I love I all you. things Loggins most of the time. So, well, my um, second cut, my second cut. Yep. Yeah. Is by a band you already mentioned, Huey Lewis and the News, but oh, a little song. different song yeah. going with the heart of rock and roll. So again, a lot of choices. Yeah, I just really like this one. Yeah. It's a rock and roll. Yep. Man, their greatest hits album is good. It's really good. You can um, just put that on and I love it. Go, that, like, I love that uh, I read the book. Of course, it's a famous movie now, but I read the book American Psycho. Uh-huh. Like the Christian Bale movie now, yeah. um, and they have a whole chapter because yeah. he talks about music, and he does it in the movie too about Huey Lewis and those, mm-hmm. but they talk about sports, mm-hmm. and it's literally an entire chapter talking mm-hmm. about how great that album that was. That was a wacko book, man. It's a wacko Did you read it? No, but I remember Some. you reading it. Oh, yeah. It's and I remember you, like- It's, like, it's interesting. It, it was scary to you. It was a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of things going yeah. on. Uh, they didn't even touch the tip of the iceberg for the movie. They yeah. couldn't. No. Uh, but this reached number six on the US Billboard, only number 71 in Germany, so for the Germans- Huey is apparently no Hasselhoff. Uh, they didn't. They, they don't give him the same accolades. The this is Hoff. a memorable song from my childhood. I remember at the end of the song, he starts naming cities that rock. Yeah. Uh, so I memorized. I taped it, and I would. Me- I memorized all the cities. I wrote them down. Detroit. Uh, yeah. So I could sing along because yeah. I want to sing along. Uh, we were in Portland, Oregon, but sadly, closest he got was Seattle. So I uh-huh. guess Star to Rock and Roll does not truly beat <laughs> in Oregon with us. Uh, oh, that's but, all right. Uh, I tried. I wanted Huey to come there yeah. uh, in his song, and uh, he skipped over us. Yeah. Seattle always gets the love over the Portland. So. All the time. That's the way it works. Yeah. So, but what is your honorable mention? Okay, my honorable mention fits, I think. So you, we talk about the honorable mention being a song that we found later in life, mm-hmm. right? Uh, so this is a song called The Old Man Down the Road. The Old Man. Oh, good one. And it's John Fogarty. Yeah, I know that. My dad, uh, big CCR oh, Fogarty fan. Yeah. I found CCR later in life. My dad liked them. I always thought that was kind of silly. <laughs> you thought CCR was silly? Yeah, I thought it was kind of like old old music. And oh, then, okay. And then I started listening to them. I was like, oh, man. They're pretty good. So good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so this is, uh, yeah, he was the founder of uh, Creedence Clearwater. Um, they had uh, nine top 10 singles, eight, uh, eight gold albums uh, between 68 and 72. They're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yep. Um, songs like Proud Mary, Bad Moon Rising, Fortunate Son, Green River, Down in the Corner, Who'll Stop the Rain. Um, yeah, this was uh, Fogarty's only top 10 single as a solo artist. It peaked at number 10. Yeah. Um, but then, he, uh, interesting, I was reading, he, he got sued. Somebody sued him, said it sounded too much like uh, Run Through the Jungle. Oh, um, yeah. And and actually, when I listened to it, I'm like, yeah, it sounds uh, a here's lot the thing. alike. He won the lawsuit. Like, he... he yeah. He... One, then the guy that sued him had to pay back and kind of set a precedence in court stuff. But is it running like, the jungle? Uh, who sang that song? Uh, uh, CCR. That's the CCR. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, my yeah. thing is that I don't think it sounds like that. I just think his voice is the song. Yeah. And so you recognize it. So any beat close, you're like, yeah. oh, you're copying yeah, that yeah, song. Yeah. So yeah. So he has a distinct voice. Yeah. So, so I, I like that. I, I kind of like that style of music now. And yeah. So, that's a good yeah. one. Well, my honorable mention is awesome. Had I not found it later, this would have been on the top ten easy. It is Sister Christian by Night Ranger. Yeah, this is so good. You hadn't found that, and I mean that wasn't, oh. that wasn't on your radar in '84. No, no, absolutely not. I love this song. So I'll tell you when I actually found this uh, song. Um, it I didn't hear it the first time until I saw Boogie Nights. 
So in oh, okay. Boogie Nights, when Mark Wahlberg uh, goes to buy uh, cocaine, basically they mm-hmm. end up in Alfred Molina's house, and this song is going off in there. Like, and it's the first time I ever heard it. I go, that is a really cool sounding <laughs> song. Like, I had no idea what was going on. So again, I didn't listen to a lot of rock and roll as a kid, outside of maybe some Van Halen, ZZ Top, whatever was on MTV. Uh, so I just never found it the first time, but. Maybe I wasn't the only one that found it because in Australia, it only got to number 99 on the billboard charge. So uh, we were both initially missing out on that song. Hopefully they found it now, uh, the, the Aussies. <laughs> Hopefully you guys found it. But uh, yeah, I it's a cool scene in that movie. Boogie Nights is an awesome movie anyway. Um, but I remember, yeah, hearing it and thinking, wow, that's a cool song. Like, And then I look in and go, 1984, What? where, where was I at on that one? <laughs> holy, holy moly. That's a good one. Uh, yeah, that sounds like you. That now, sounds now, like me. You know. Well, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So we are at our number ones. Number ones. Wow. So my number one, I think, is going to be a little obvious. Plus, I always do. Yeah. You look like a virgin. I Perfect. I mean, yeah. I like a virgin. It's like one of the most 80s, 80s songs uh, you can find. right there what you just said. It's one of the most 80s, 80s songs. So uh, one description I read, it said, the song's lyrics are ambiguous, consisting of hidden innuendos and open to various interpretations. What, <laughs> what was ambiguous? I don't know. And what was where, where were the hidden innuendos? Yeah, no. To that, me, it was right out in front. Pretty straightforward. Yep. Uh, it was her first number one in the Billboard Hot 100. Uh, you got uh, she's just going through the canals of uh, Venice. Venice. Uh, she's roaming around a castle wearing a white wedding dress. Uh, very uh, frilly and lacy, and well, that um, that was the style. Then everyone yep. copied. They had yes. the dress. People yes. used to draw the mole on. <laughs> they wear four hundred yeah. bracelets like she yes. did. You know all that. Uh, uh, well, what's your phrase? Uh, a gratuitous weirdo. Here we reference. go. Uh, everyone, so, uh, are you, you going to roll with like a surgeon? Like a surgeon. Uh, terrible. Yep. Uh, this is where <laughs> she. This is where she became a superstar. Like this is yeah. Six consecutive weeks at number one. Uh, number two on Wait a minute. Uh, do you think Like a Virgin is where she became a superstar? Are you I do. When Like a Surgeon came out, that, that cemented her uh, superstardom. I don't know. I, I like... did make the argument early on that, <laughs> that kind of, you know, when, when he it's the weird effect. he gets a hold of right? it, that's when you made uh, it. Uh, uh, um, this, oh, I like this quote. It's an author, Michael Campbell, concluded that with the video, Madonna created, quote, the formula that would set the tone for her subsequent work, uh, combining provocative, shocking, and controversial themes and images with bright, accessible music. And oh, yeah. I kind of feel like that quote could be, she set the formula for kind of pop music. Yeah, a lot of pop music. After that, right? Oh, yeah. Um, I'd say that she set the formula for a lot of entertainment. So fashion, um, lots of controversial stuff from the song. So family, uh, family organizations criticized it. Um it undermined family values. It promoted sex outside of marriage. Some wanted the song and video banned, um, which led me in this rabbit hole of the uh, filthy 15 list. No. I didn't know existed. It has been <laughs> argued that Like a Virgin is one of the songs that should have been on that list, but it wasn't. Oh. Um, and it was songs like, um, uh, I'm going to just read some. These are awful. Uh, Judas Priest, Eat Me Alive. Mm, Motley Crue, Bastard. Prince was uh, Darling Nikki. Uh, Sheena Easton's on there. Oh. Uh, Def Leppard, High and Dry. Uh, Twisted Sister, We're Not Gonna Take It. Madonna, <laughs> Dress You Up. Cindy Lauper, ACDC. Dress You Up? Yeah, that was on one of the... Fi- uh, Cindy Lauper, She Bop. <laughs> that was on the 15th. Yeah, All 15. right. Um, and then uh, Venom. Uh, Mary, uh, the Mary Jane girls, never heard of it. Black Sabbath. Anyway, right. but yeah, so my number one is Like a Virgin. All right. To me, that you said it very well. That's one of the most 80s, 80s songs. 80s songs you listen to. And you can listen to. Yeah. That's really good. Well, my number one uh, is uh, honestly one of my favorite 1980s songs. Um, came out obviously in 84, but it could have come out anytime. Oh. I think it's amazing. It is Hold Me Now by the Thompson Twins. Yep. Yep. That's good. I love that background when the guy joins in with the high pitch. <laughs> yes. My favorite part. When he starts doing those high yep. extra parts, so good. They don't do it anywhere except the end of the song. There yep. it is. There it is. It's so good. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I love this song. This To me, this is essential 80s listening. Yeah. This sounds like the 80s. You play this for someone and that, that pop songs, a lot of other pop songs sounded like this. Mm-hmm. The synthesizer, everything's there. 
This hit number three in the U.S., but Switzerland was predictably neutral on this song as it only reached number 18. Uh, it was in the top 10 in seven other countries. This is one of the songs that will always remind me of the 80s. Growing up during that time, it should be on every 80s playlist. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just, it's one of those songs. Like you you hear it and you immediately transport yourself yeah. back to the 80s. You know exactly what was going on, what yeah. it felt like, all that stuff. Yep. So. No, that's a great pick. Great pick. Thompson Twins. Yeah. I love that high pitch part in the back. I wait the whole song just to hear that because they don't do it until the last 30 seconds of the song. No. So, so whoever thought of that, great so producer. Good. Great producing on that one. So, uh, well, those are our lists. And, and we're not going to talk cutting room. No. So, you, you, because I, yeah. yeah, we, there's so many. Well, so many good ones. As I was saying, those are our lists. And I would say that if you've forgotten about how great 84 was for music, I think we gave you just a small sample. Oh, yeah. Um, but there, you could make a, Hell of a playlist for oh, yeah. you to go back and relive what music was like 40 years ago. And some of these these songs still sound good today. I, I don't care what anybody tells me. Yeah. I know I have nostalgia for it, but they still sound good today. Uh, I promise you we left so many songs off. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I was going to have other no, eight, notable 84 songs, but like I said, we had so many. I think we're going to do a part two at some point, and we're gonna re, I, we could come up with 10 more uh, oh, easily, easy. Um, easy that I left out that I would like to highlight. So I think 84 may get another look. Mm-hmm. Sometime down the road. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's, it's something to like. Yep, um, that was a great list. But you can have one. What's one oh song? My gosh. I'll give you one. What's right. one Did, that you didn't make that was like, man, man, how could I leave that out? Oh, you're putting me on the spot. Uh, yeah. One song. Golly, do you have one off the top of your head? Not off the top of my head. Man. Um. Uh. Oh. Uh. Corey Hart, sunglasses at night. That's a good one. I mean, you I, know, we didn't have any Michael Jackson. There was no Michael Jackson. Neither no. of us. Yeah, and he had a, he had a couple. <laughs> uh, yeah, we had yeah. a couple. Yeah, and we had no Michael Jackson, so yeah. um, that that didn't get there at all. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's interesting that we didn't have any, but we had a lot of other good stuff. So, and again, we mentioned earlier Van Halen. We went with Hot for Teacher. Uh, Jump was one of the biggest songs of the year, and neither of us. Yeah, and I like that song. I just like Hot for Teacher better. Yeah. So, um, well, unfortunately, that brings us to the end of this episode of Totally Eighties and Nineties Recall. We hope you've had a rad and gnarly time looking back at our favorite hits of 1984. If you like this podcast, and we know that you do, please hit that subscribe button and share it with a friend and head on over to Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts and leave us feedback and five stars, which will only help the show grow. Rob and I love hearing from our listeners, so please leave us a message on Instagram, Twitter, or our website, which are all included in the show notes. You can also email us at 80s90srecall at gmail.com with comments or show ideas you may want to hear in the future. So what are we doing next time? So next time, we're going to do a big spoonful of nostalgia. We're going to build a time capsule of the 1980s. We're each going to put 10 things in a time capsule to show future generations uh, what we think the 80s looked or sounded like. So for this episode, no cuts, no honorable mentions, just a straight 10 items each, and we'll see what we come up with. Oh, that'll be fun. I'm excited for that one. Yeah. little blast from the past. Yeah. All right. Well, you got anything else? I got nothing. Fancy goodbye? No fancy goodbye. All right. We're out. All right.